This patient is a four-month-old male with bilateral cataracts where we conduct a catalyst procedure of the anterior and the posterior capsule in the right eye. A lateral canthotomy was performed beforehand. The laser is installed in the operating room and you can see the anesthesia team in the back. After sterile draping of the eye, the suction ring of the liquid optics interface is docked to the sclera and filled with BSS. The patient on the bed is swiveled to the right under the laser and the suction ring is locked to the laser optic. Surplus BSS flows out through open channels and does not come into contact with the eye. The intraocular pressure increase is about 10 millimeters of mercury. After docking, a 3D spectral domain OCT automatically detects the ocular surfaces. The system suggests the capsulotomy, which was set preoperatively at a depth of 1000 micrometers and 4 microjoules of energy with a 3.5 millimeter diameter. Treatment time is 5.5 seconds. A lateral movement of the capsule reflects the high elasticity of the paediatric capsule. We implement a correction factor depending on the age to achieve an optimal capsulotomy diameter. After undocking from the laser, two paracentesis are made at 9 and 3 o'clock using the Blumenthal knife. A perfect capsulotomy can be seen. Notice the free-floating capsule disc is resting in a slightly temporal and superior position. After filling the AC with OVD, the free-floating capsulotomy is taken out with a microforceps for further histopathological and dimensional evaluations. The nucleus and the cortex are removed using bimanual irrigation aspiration handpieces followed by the polishing of the posterior capsule as well as the backside of the anterior capsule. After meticulous cleaning of all epithelial remnants, the capsulotomy diameter is measured horizontally using the Engel measurement device. The measured diameter is 4.6 millimeters, which is exactly what we aimed for. The eye is now prepared for the posterior laser capsulotomy by filling the anterior chamber with helon. Then a redocking is performed using a manipulation device because the general anesthesia slightly lost depth at this point. After the successful redocking, which is usually easy in paediatric eyes, the interface again is filled with BSS. The catalyst system controls the lateral forces as well as the vertical forces during docking. The 3D spectral domain OCT is performed. In this case, the posterior capsule is visible with the OCT images and is marked so the image guidance system will treat it as the anterior capsule of the lens. The posterior capsule is usually bulged a little anteriorly underneath the anterior capsulotomy, which can be seen nicely in the axial and sagittal view of the spectral domain OCT.
The posterior capsulotomy is individually aligned and centered to the anterior capsulotomy and the position reconfirmed. The laser creates the posterior capsulotomy as if it is an anterior capsulotomy. In this case, it starts in the vitreous anteriorly and the cavitation bubbles around the floating capsulotomy can be observed on the infrared camera. After undocking, the patient bed is swiveled to the side to continue the surgery under the microscope. In this case, the laser posterior capsule was already curled and moved to the lateral side. A minimal 23 gauge anterior vitrectomy is performed and is made easier by the small gas bubbles from the femtosecond laser cavitation within the anterior vitreous. The paracentesis are sutured using nylon 11.0 and the lateral lid opening is also closed by a buried resorbing suture. We decided not to implant an IOL because of the very young age of the patient. The final retroillumination stereocoaxial view shows a near perfect, well aligned and centered anterior as well as posterior capsulotomy. Diameter of the anterior capsulotomy is 4.6 millimeters and 4.5 millimeters for the posterior capsulotomy which can be regarded as optimal for secondary lens implantation like bag in the lens or other lens modalities.